Yeah, here we are. Another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. It's your boy, Aunt Damn It. Sir. Frankie Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get right into the shits. Um, I wanted to start with, though, a uh, quick question. People wanting to cancel 4th of July. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on that? Uh, it, it should be, um, but I just think it's programming. It's like I was saying yesterday, I said, you know, a lot of black people boycotted it this year. Why not boycott it from now on? But and when I went to the store, still a lot of people buying beer and burgers and, you know, hot dog buns and plenty of niggas are still out here popping fireworks. We all know that. Uh, right. I feel like I'm, niggas just want to pop fireworks to be popping them anyway. Yeah, it don't even matter. I'm God, I'm not mad at it. I just, it gets kind of annoying after a while, but it's programming. So it's like if you're 40 years old and all you know your whole life is to pop fireworks on the 4th and wear red, white, and blue and cook out, I can't expect you to just go cold turkey out of nowhere. Everyone can't just go cold turkey and say, I'm done. It's right. like, a, like you used to drink or some people who used to smoke. Some people can go cold turkey and just never smoke again. A lot of other people, it's a process. It takes a, uh, it takes time. So I was like, that shit pay. wasn't easy though. Yeah, I know that. And like I said, that's what I say. Be patient. Don't get mad because some black folks are still, you know, doing the fourth. It takes time. Not everybody can go cold turkey and just say, fuck it, I'm done. It's conditioned right. programming. If you're 30 and that's all you know every year, the fourth is to cook out, pop fireworks. Now all of a sudden you're just supposed to stop. Everybody don't have the the discipline or whatever to just, just stop like that. It's, it's a process. It's programming. You know, that was my next question. Like, so what exactly is celebrating the fourth? What does it look like? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you could just be, you could be cooking out, but does that mean that you're actually? Yeah, like, you could just be celebrating having a day off and just celebrating being black and being with your. Or friends. not even celebrating. You just like, yo, I'm fucking. It's, it's it's a nice day. Like, let's throw some shit on the grill. Like, cause is it like celebrating? Does that mean like wrapping yourself up like Joel Santana? Or is it like popping off fireworks? Because you can't tell me that grilling, um, having a cookout is yeah. celebrating the 4th of July just because you're oh, yeah. doing it on the actual day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know niggas that grill out all year round. You know what I'm saying? And like right. I said, everything is on sale at the store. And as far as fireworks, I mean, the kids really fuck with that. You got kids and they want to, I'm not going to tell my kids, oh, you can't pop fireworks because we don't do the 4th anymore. Right. Yeah. But like I say, it's a, it's a process. If, if we are going to ever condition out of it fully, it's going to take time. It ain't going to happen overnight. You know, oh, yeah. now, what happened to this boycott is supposed to go down uh, on the 7th. 7th. Like, uh, right about Wednesday. that. Wednesday. That's, no, tu- Tuesday. Yeah, what happened to that? Yeah, I want to. I definitely want to see what's going to happen because um, right God. now, everybody's taking their asses to the beach. Yeah, like, but it's kind of late now because everybody even got their Fourth of July sales over the weekend, and corporate America already made their money. So I don't mm-hmm. think they talk about a one day boycott. <laughs> right, it should have been the whole first week. Like that would have been my thing. Like, just don't spend any money. Like, you can't like, because I just I was watching on um social media yesterday after I got out of work, and everybody was talking, "Oh, if you if I catch you celebrating the Fourth, I'm blocking you," and I'm like. How did you, like, what is celebrating the fourth look like? You know, like, you talking about if I'm out here going to a cookout because I, I want some free food, I don't want to cook in my house? Like, what? <laughs> I think it was 90 some degrees yesterday. Like, fuck that. I want to be outside, you know, like social distancing. Um, Because there were some people that weren't social distancing, but that's not my problem. Uh, Yo, like, that, that shit just blew my mind. And to this day, like, nobody on Twitter had, um, an explanation as to what celebrating the 4th of July actually looks like or that's what it just, is. That's like what I call like just uh, misguided anger. You know what I mean? You're yep. just angry, but you don't have no real direction and you're not being realistic. Like I say, niggas been doing this shit since, what, 1776? Well, we was enslaved you know, when that started, but since you've been free, you've been celebrating independence, even though it ain't really your independence all right. this time. Like I say, it's just conditioning. It's gonna take a while before black people just drop it cold turkey. So like I say, be patient. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, like, it, 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 yeah it's it's most likely it ain't anyway. First of all, fireworks come from China, so like that's yeah. like, like a Chinese thing. Yeah. 
and that's the kids, man. Like I say, you got you got kids, and I mean, I, I, I grew up as a kid. That's all I, I looked forward to was fireworks. What I look like telling my kid or my nieces and then no fireworks, cause right? Like, we, 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 we ain't black. Right. Yeah, no, like they, nah, that, I ain't gonna tell no kids <laughs> fireworks, cause, cause that's foul. Yeah, you know I mean, that's foul. Fun. fun, I had fun. Yeah. Yeah, nah, it was it was cool. I drank a bunch of uh sparkling waters, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing nothing special. Ate some ate some food off of the grill. Um, watched some fireworks be popped off. Like it wasn't it was you know what was so funny though? It really did not seem like the fourth of July anyway. Like it, it's just this whole year has been weird. Yeah, so, it's groundhog day. Every day is just yes. Same shit. Yes, yes, and exactly. If it was on a Saturday this year. You would have thought it was going to be lit parties, clubs. We didn't know this COVID shit was going to fuck up the whole year. I think this year is just going to be one of those years like, okay, this is that year didn't count. Right. Put an asterisk so, next to it. Yeah, we should, everybody should get to live an extra year later because it's COVID. <laughs> everybody get an extra year. Yeah, nah, it was, it was weird. I was sitting out there last night and I'm like, damn, like, this really doesn't seem like the 4th of July anymore. Nah. Like, it, it's what I knew it as, you know, I guess. But yeah, that's why I was like, you know, ain't no, like who is really like celebrating? Like what, like, I just, that shit just bothered me. I'm like, what does celebrating look like? But yeah, like you said, it, it ain't going to be, um, it ain't going to be a, a quick turnaround. Like, and as somebody who has, um, you know, quit, using certain like substances and, and shit is like you have to be done with it like internally yeah. you, you know can't just mean? nobody can't just tell you hey you need to stop it's right like if it's smoking, for instance, you better stop smoking and you have to be ready to stop whatever it is until you ready to stop celebrating the fourth then ain't gonna you ain't gonna just do right. it because the girl or your mom's told you to do it you gotta yeah. be ready to change niggas was talking all that shit but i bet you if somebody bought them a cheeseburger they ate that shit yeah, they ate that shit. Have these niggas out here popping fireworks all night. They're gonna do it again tonight. Somebody on uh on Instagram was like, "So y'all just spent y'all whole uh stimulus on fireworks?" <laughs> the niggas been popping like. fireworks for like a month and a half now. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. I'm like, yo, I just I had I was losing my mind in the house. Like I'm like, tired. It sounded like I'm in Iraq or something. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I grew up in Newark, so like fireworks, gunshots, it's like whatever. I could sleep through that shit. Sleep through that shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um so it's been a wild week in um in urban media. Um this week, DJ Academics, the chipmunk, has uh had his uh his run. It looks like um he was getting attacked, some would say. Some would say he's getting clowned. Some would say he's being exposed. But um, so DJ Academics was suspended by Complex and banned from Twitch streaming. Now, Complex has the show Everyday Struggle um, that Joe Budden's created, but, you know, they took it because, you know, you sign contracts and all of that intellectual property shit. And then Twitch is where he streams at night, where he goes on his rants and he starts drinking that Henny. I told y'all he goes, right? I told y'all, stop drinking Hennessy. The shit is bad for you. Like, once you pass 21, 23, no more Hennessy. You got to do it. Yeah, yeah. That shit, because think about it like this, right? When you get to about 25, that's when, like, life starts to change a little bit. By that point, you should be done with Hennessy. Like, you should have had your moment to where it's like, it's really not that special. Just try telling these niggas that shit. These niggas love it. I've been saying it, but academics is, you know, he get on that henny and he start wilding. Yeah. And so he was out of pocket. Yeah. So it started with um Freddie Gibbs, right? The yeah. the beef with him and Freddie Gibbs. So it's not even a beef, which it's just funny because like academics wants to fucking talk shit to Freddie Gibbs. But so Freddie Gibbs was on the bootleg Kev podcast and he said that Jeezy was musically irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on that? I think he's telling the truth. I mean, I'm a I'm a Freddie Gibbs fan now. For people who aren't who it's not commercialized. So a lot of people the they're the mainstream fans that say, Well, I don't know if Freddie Gibbs. I know Jeezy though. So right. they'll take that comment and run with it. But musically, I think I, I, I fuck with Freddie Gibbs. Uh and Jeezy, I mean, when's the last Jeezy album you liked? That's all subjective, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, 
was the last time Jeezy dropped an album when the whole streets was going crazy? That's just not Freddie Gibbs. He's not a mainstream artist. But right. Fire. I just don't like the, uh, it, he, sometimes he go a little too far. It's like, okay, leave Jeezy alone. You've been going at Jeezy for like right. 10 years now. But that's, that's that's his fuel. And if that's what keeps him motivated, then fuck it. That's what keeps him motivated. Because Freddie Gibbs did say that. He's like, Jeezy motivates him. You know, yeah. he, he still likes him or whatever. And he was obviously, Freddie Gibbs was obviously drinking at the time. Like you can tell <laughs> just by the audio, like he was a little sauce because he hasn't really spoke on Jeezy in a few years at this point. Oh, no, he, he speaks on him a lot. But like I said, cause that's why people, that's why academics and some people are like, well, you always talking about Jeezy cause Jeezy was his, he was on the label and it just didn't work out and they had some beats, but that's his fuel. You know what I mean? If that's right. what's gonna be him to keep putting out good albums and fuck it. Jeezy not ain't worrying about it. So why is that? No, academic? clearly. And right. so, 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 so the, the next thing that came out of that was the whole conversation about what is relevant. Right. Because um, Act basically broke it down to saying like, oh, Jeezy could, could come out tomorrow and sell 50,000 out the gate. Freddie Gibbs can't. But it's like, is that really relevant? Like, because if what I guess what relevance should mean or the technical term is you are it's important right now. Right in the in the matter, like it's a topic. Like, and Freddie Gibbs is a topic. Freddie Gibbs is consistently yeah. dropping music. It's good right. quality music. Um, I told people I was like the last Jeezy album that I really really liked was Seen It All, and I feel like lyrically, that's where Jeezy was his best at. Everybody wants to say the first album. Like, I I take away the first album because the first album is what made him who he is. Like, you you can't take that away from him. But as years go by. You got to look at the progression. And yeah, the last few Jeezy albums, I was like, mm, it's not it. You know, he, like. You didn't really need it. You know what no. I mean? And I fucked with Jeezy tough, but I, just, I didn't even really, I didn't say to myself, I need a new Jeezy album in my life. It just came out and I was just like, uh, all right. But I mean, relevant to me, like, what is, like you say, what is relevance? You know, and I'm like, well, Freddie Gibbs is definitely relevant now because he was smart to go back and forth and clown academics. I'm like, you're not going to win a, a battle of wit or jokes with Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, and nah. You're not, you're not funny. You're not going to go. You're just not going to do it. I just don't like bloggers. Stay in your place. It's fun to see rappers go at it. The culture, mm -hmm. you know, battling. I don't want to see no blogger who sits at home on his ass going at it with rappers talking about how much more money he got than them. And, to stay in your place. And as far as record sales, I think that's not relevant anymore. Yeah. You talk about record sales in 2020. What's the last it's time? Like, you can you album? can you tour? Can you still yeah, put no. out an album like that people are going to listen to? When's the last time you purchased an album? Who still buys albums? So yeah. why? Would, yeah, and that's the thing. Academics puts out everybody's record sales still as if it's 2005. Who cares? Right. Who cares about what? Who the labels sells. don't even care about record sales anymore. That should tell you yeah. something. Everything is all streaming and just bootleg like a motherfucker. Nobody buys albums. If anything, you might have Apple or Title or something. Nobody's buying these records. I, mean, right. I think does that to be funny? Oh, so and so only sold forty thousand this week. It's like, dude. Yeah, that shit don't make sense. So <laughs> it went from it went from that and. Then, you know, uh, Academic said something about Freddie Gibbs' kid, which, you know, it's something, it's a line you should never cross, especially when you come on, talk about something, I'm not, I'm not a tough guy, I'm just a blogger, but then you proceed to talk tough, like, as if you want to do something. But Freddie Gibbs, you know, Freddie Gibbs is like, look, I ain't going to fight this dude. He keep telling him I'm going to pinch his titties. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta learn, like you learn with Ja Rule's lesson when he was talking about Eminem's daughter. You don't, you don't. That's just yeah. one of the rules. You don't talk about nobody's kids. And then he clapped at John Legend's wife, and I think that's what got him suspended. Yeah. You know, you're repping a company in complex. You're an employee. You have a badge. You clock in. You can't right. just anything. And I think, like you say, that Henny got him on that shit. He forgot his position. Told you, man. You're not. This ain't your little YouTube or something on your Instagram. Right. Represent complex. So. so that was that was my other question. So do you think because even though I don't like stand on any side with this, even though I think academics is like an asshole in this whole situation because he like escalated it for no reason. Um, the whole freedom of speech thing, 
Like, cause I was like, hold up. Well, what happened to freedom of speech? Like he should be able to say what he wants to say, but then you just said it's because he's an employee of complex. So you think that that has something to do with all of the, like, well, not even just the suspension from complex, but the being banned from Twitch. Cause that Bro, has nothing to do with complex, right? As far Twitch, as I- You've been going on these drunk, drunk rants on Twitch for a minute. So Twitch probably just got tired of this shit. Plus, that was probably like a reaction, a counter reaction to what Complex did. Like, we got a Complex suspended them. The least we could do was do something, so they banned them. But, right. Uh, yeah, and then even him, him and Meek was going at it. Like I said, you, 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 yeah, I, I feel you got freedom of speech. You got to defend yourself. But it's like, dude, I, I just, I never, I could never remember a, a blogger or a hip hop interviewer or something beefing with rappers like this. Like, it never you, goes over well. You, you're not star. Yeah, and and even Star, Star, that nigga, he, he keep a thing on his hip, so it's like... Yeah, Star is actually a street dude who runs with them old school goons, them train robbing niggas from, you know, the 80s and 90s. Yep. You're not Star, so just... And Star, ironically, used to work with him, and he had to leave, so you're the problem. Yep. It's Joe left, and then Star left. They can't keep nobody around you. Yeah. It's Joe the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, they struggle. I so, two years. Yeah, I haven't, shit, I think I stopped watching it after Joe. I might have watched a couple episodes when Star was there, but after that, like, it was just, it, it, was, down here. it was hard to watch to see Star just sunning that little boy, like. Yeah, 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 that was bad, like. But so, here's my here's my next question, and then we'll move on after this. Um, Do you think Academics is about to make his uh, exit from uh, Complex Media? Do you think that this is probably... Cause he he they they said he's suspended, but they're taking a break at the same time too. So I think you, that I mean I don't want to sound like a hater or anything like that. I mean I'm not gonna say take the man's job away, but I I don't know what the <clears throat> is the show worth it? Is the show doing good numbers? If it's you know I, it depends on how good the show how productive the show is, and if the show is doing well. If the show ain't doing well, I clip him. Well, you know them black people, uh, not them black people, them white people up there, they love the fucking drama between uh, black entertainers and fucking uh, bloggers or content creators, whatever you want to call it. So it brings in traffic for them, but... They suspended them, though. Right. So that's why I'm saying, because I'm, I'm wondering if that's like them trying to do damage control to where though they're like, all right, we're going to take a break. You're suspended for two episodes. It was cool then, when rappers when he came at john legend's wife mm. now you're into a whole nother bracket john legend is here john legend is a grammy award winner what the hell did john legend's wife do i know chrissy <laughs> she, she popped off on twitter but like what the hell does she do to no but he called her a bitch and that was it and i think because he came at someone who was in a higher position just being associated with john legend that's yeah. what up. They didn't complex was cool with him going at it with rappers like Freddie Gibbs and Big Mill. That you say they love that ignorant shit. Mm -hmm. Once he went at the, one of the higher ups uh, in the business, John Legend's wife, and John Legend probably made that phone call, and uh, that's all it took. Got on the horn quick. Yeah. All right. So um, let's let's move along. So uh, Terry Crews is back uh, making headlines again. He tripled down on his Black Lives Matter statement, and so. All of y'all out there, you know, if you're a first time uh, viewer to the show, thank you. But um, I'm a firm believer in standing on your bullshit, right, wrong, or indifferent. And Teddy, oh, not Teddy, Terry Crews is standing on his bullshit. So he put out a tweet where he said, let's not make Black Lives Matter morph into Black Lives Better. Which everybody's like, what the fuck you mean Black Lives Better? Like... How did how did I and he 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 prefaced it by saying like I'm a child of God so we're all brothers and sisters, like what do you do, do you think he's protecting like a a connection or something like what is, Terry Crews is hiding something whenever whenever people bring in God and something that's the way they cover up their bullshit also when they try to bring in God to try to defend it what they're saying I'm a child of God and all that I think we really just gotta and I, I don't do cancel culture we really just gotta start ignoring some of these niggas like Terry right. Crews. I don't know how many followers he's got, and I know he's kind of like a household name, but we got to stop giving niggas like Terry Crews attention. Terry Crews is put in place to keep niggas in check and to try to spread all kind of bullshit around like this. This is what he does. He's he's really stuck in character. He's, he's never got out of the script from white chicks. Mm. 
<laughs> he's still on that shit. It's like it's like he was almost as if he's paid to to say you could look at him and he was did that interview and I'm looking at him like I don't even believe he believes what he's saying. Right. It looks like it's some like he's reading a script or something. It's like you don't believe that as a big black man yourself. Right. You know, uh, who's like six five, two fifty, two six? You don't believe the shit that you're saying. I, I don't. Right. I paid off big time, and the check definitely it, uh, it didn't bounce. But that shit cleared, um, <laughs> because it's you know, and because I listened to a lot of people, and they were saying, um, I think I understand what Terry is trying to say. It's just it's not coming out right. To and to some point. I kind of see that too. He could probably uh, like, but but it's just the way that is worded doesn't make any sense yeah. because like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say like, let's not make this violent. Like let's not make this um, into something to where cause even like trying to, that's the only thing I can think of. Let's not make this a violent thing. It makes it seem like he, what I get out from it. That's like, he's trying to say, let's not be pro black. Let's all come together. Right. That, but it seems like, you know, we can't be, we're not better than everyone. We're trying to, we're equal. I think that's what he's trying to say. Hmm. But it's worded bad and just, it's it's like, dude, that's not even- It's nasty. The, yeah, it's not, this isn't what it's about. Black people are just trying to get justice and equal rights. And every time we try to, it seems like we take two steps ahead, he tries to take us back five steps with his nonsense. Right. So, I, I don't know why nobody took his Twitter away from him. Like, where's his wife? His wife is like letting him tweet this shit out. Like, I I know he has to have some black people in his corner. That's like, yo, Terry, chill, she's bro. Biracial. She's what? She's biracial, I believe. His wife. Yeah, so she's probably caught up in the middle of it. Like, you know, so, one of these motherfuckers talk to Terry Crews, man. Somebody talk some sense into him. Yeah. <laughs> right, because nobody has ever as long as much as I've been following with you know the whole black renaissance, black revolution, whatever you want to call it, I've never heard nobody say uh all white people must die or um you know keep the black blood strong. Like I haven't heard any of those trigger words that you would hear coming from white supremacist group, you know, yeah. because that's initially how this started with Terry Crew saying like a hey, Black life. If we get rid of all white people, like nobody ever said, get rid of white people. Yeah. Said, nobody respect said. us and treat us as humans. Like See, make our life as important as you treat the damn fucking Chihuahua out in the street. Yeah, he's pushing false narratives to try to confuse black people. And believe it or not, it's a lot of Terry Crews out there. It's a yep. he represents a big percentage of black people out there who think like that. You know, yep. a lot of a lot of them they see exactly what he's talking about. He represents those type of things. And that brings me to our next point, which would be Kaya and Lil Wayne. Now, Kaya, man, that girl did some some work to Lil Wayne. Like, I listened to that shit, and I said, damn. Like, she just, like, like bacon. Like, put him on the stove and fried his ass and then turned him over and fried him again. And for those of y'all in the comments that were um, saying that, because they took what I said when I said uh, she's not as great of a rapper as she is a roaster or a dragger or whatever you want to call that. And they took it as to me to say, like, oh, she's a trash rapper. Like, I never said that, you know, her rapping skills. Had, and I was just saying, if she was as great as rapping, she would not be here doing this. Like, yeah. this is obviously her calling. Like, she's entertaining. Like, you guys love it. So nobody ever said anything about that. But you know, fans would be fans, and I ain't got nothing against that. But um, so Lil Wayne was referring to his experience of dealing with um, white police officers. And I guess he's, like, taking a stand on the same side of the fence as Jay-Z, where it's like, all right, we got to do something different other than kneeling or other than um, protesting and rioting. Like, we got to do something, something different. And he referenced um, the white cop that saved him when he uh, shot himself in the chest at like 10 or something, some shit like that. That's like a, a, you know, and he always referenced that. And I'm like, dude, that white cop, that's a police officer's job. Like if they show up at the scene and somebody shot, they're not supposed to fucking put their finger in the bullet hole and like make it hurt more. They're supposed to try to keep you alive. His white savior. Right. And Lil Wayne has been rich since he's been what, like 12 or something? Like he's been, and, with that being said, you know, 
why do cele- black celebrities feel like they have to speak on social issues? Because he has a platform now? Like, because he has a platform and a lot of black fans and black people, we call him out. We want to hear from him. We want to hear from Jay Z, Beyonce. I'm like, I don't know why y'all want to hear from these celebrities. Like, like Dave Chappelle said, let the people do the talking, let the people do the marching, let the people get to the action. People who are privileged, financially privileged, because that's what I'll call a black celebrity. Like, mm-hmm. we financially privileged. You don't know the struggle of black. You know what I mean? You ain't been in this struggle for over 20 something years. I don't really care what you got to say. Cause he did an interview a few years ago where he said, because his concert tickets are so expensive, more his mostly white people go see him in concert than black people. Oh, yeah. That's what he was saying. I don't see color. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we don't really need to hear from these celebrities. But when Kaya, wasn't she trying to uh, flag the video or some shit? Yeah, that, um, people were in the comments saying that, oh, be careful, she's out here flagging. And I'm like, okay, like, I, like what is she flagging? Like, I just was reporting and I showed part of the clip. Like, I didn't take the whole video and I didn't monetize it. Like, She finally found her niche online and she's trying to roll with that. She's going to make sure that she get a show out of this or something. Her at home with that raggedy library background, banging that gavel, <laughs> you know, calling motherfuckers out. It's funny. I mean, right. I'm happy because I don't know how she feels. Like, not even that. Like, I'm happy that there is someone of some sort of stature because, you know, she is a black woman that was, you know, a former entertainer or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to. out, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, somebody got to do it. And I, I applauded her for doing it. I started the video by saying that and everybody made it seem like I was hating on a woman. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Yeah, that's, that's how I go. Yeah, they always do that. I did the same thing with Trina. Oh, you hating on my mind. Like, no, like you're giving a person their props. But once again, we have to we have to hold people accountable for the shit that they say. Like, if I say something ignorant, I would expect somebody to hold me accountable. Now, yeah. if I want to stand on my ignorant statement, that's on me. Yeah, but, yeah. Like I said, it's a way. If I say something that's incorrect, because I don't always fact check, correct me. I like to be corrected. Just don't be a, a dickhead about it. Right. You get smart with me, then that's when we're going to go back and forth and you might get your feelings hurt. Just don't, yeah, just, you know, just say, hey, sir, that was, this is what it is, and just do it that way. Yeah. Um, and also, Kaya spoke on, um, you know, because you, a lot of a lot of black women like to bring up um men's dating history or whatever their record and she was saying that you know he doesn't respect the black woman whatever because of the women i think he just got married or something too um congratulations if that's true but um she was saying the fact about um his his daughter dating uh what was that dude wife and lucci and how he treated her and it made me think now you don't have any kids but as a father is like, you can't like, you can't tell your kid like, all right, don't date this person. Like this person is a piece of shit, scumbag, whatever, whatever. You can protect her as best as you can, but she's gonna have to go through that experience on her own. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's the part of parenting that a lot of people don't, and I don't know if Kaya has kids or not, but that's the part of parenting I think a lot of people miss is you can tell your kid and parents, your kids don't aren't your property. So regardless of what you think, you can't control what they do. You can tell them, hey, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. Now, if they decide to follow through, cool. If not, you have to let them go through that experience on their own. So when Kaya brought that up, it was like, yo, that has nothing to do with, you know, him and his Black Lives Matter statements or whatever it was. And, you know, you thinking that he doesn't like black women because of the women that he dates is like, it's kind of irrelevant. Like, but like I said, like that's their platform. A lot of times, like a lot of black women, like use that as a springboard to be like, now I'm on your ass. Like I got a whole list, but I'm going to start with the top of my list. And this is at the top of my list because it's been there for a while. But if you don't, if you're not a parent, I feel like you shouldn't comment on other people's parenting skills. No, you, and it's, it's and funny, if you are a parent. It's funny you say that about black women you're mad at brothers dating that, but statistically, black women of, out of all female ethnic groups date more out of their race than any group in America right now. And it's our so, fault. Yeah, I guess, but they doing it too. So, I mean... <laughs> it's, know, it's black men's fault. Like, no matter how you cut it, it's black mm-hmm. man's fault. 
always. And I'm like, y'all are statistically, y'all date more men out of y'all race than any women. So I mean, right. Yeah. And we don't, and we, and we never <laughs> kick down. At least from what I've seen and in my experience, like I don't kick down who you date. Yeah. Who you love. When, when Serena was dating, uh, when she was, when she married or had a baby by that white guy, you didn't see no uproar from black men. It was nope. just like, she, she dating Joe Dirk, whatever. We laughed at the shit. Yeah. Now, if LeBron James dumped Savannah and started dating some white bitch, oh man, <laughs> these white women would burn all of his jerseys and they. You think? You think what's going on outside right now is a, is a protest? Let that let that shit happen. LeBron and his wife break up. Ooh. Brother, bring a white girl to the barbecue. Everybody like, but let uh let her bring Joe Dirk in there, or Drew Carey, and everybody. We just laugh at the shit. Yeah, and, and you try to make him feel comfortable because you you already know he's uncomfortable. Yeah. We don't, we don't, I don't, for some reason, we don't, I, I think that's one, I'm trying to get off topic, but that's one thing black women and white men have in common. They hate seeing their uh, ethnic counterparts dating the opposite. White men hate seeing white women with black men, and white uh, black women hate seeing us with white women. They, right. they, you know, we don't right. really trip off it as much, but they fucking hate it. Yeah, and I get the, if, if a dude, like, if a, if a black man is like being verbally disrespectful about black women and he's dating outside, like that, that and that's it. And I told a lot of women, I was like, a lot of times that's just trolling. Like niggas is just saying shit to, to get a rise out of, out of motherfuckers because they know it pisses you off. So they're going to say, you know, whatever about skin complexion, about hair texture, yada, yada, this, that, and the third. But if you got somebody that's on your, on your line, why are you worried about this dude over here and his comments, you know? Yeah. Worry about your own shit. Worry about your own relationship <laughs> and get that nigga off the couch. Ooh, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. Um, so let's 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 do a little bit of hip hop talk. Um, so have you heard the um the Pop Smoke album? Yeah, yeah, I was listening to that over the weekend. Pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I would say I've never really like uh, listened to any of his music uh previously. Like I I heard the the Christopher Walken joint, the Dior joint. And I was like, you know, like he's got a style, you know what I'm saying? The voice is um, appealing to the air. Like that is dope. But I listened to the album. I was like, wow, this is really, really good. And it's unfortunate, you know, rest in peace to that man. It's unfortunate that his life was cut short before he got to really experience the fruits of his labor. Um, there was a few standout tracks. I can't re really recall too many of them, but, um, the shit was dope. Other than the, the um, so so there was a um, a track where they were saying that he was dissing six nine or whatever, and it's like I didn't really catch it. Maybe like my yeah. ear missed something, but all I heard was him just mention something about rainbow hair. I didn't really hear any sort of like bars to the dude. Yeah, that's all. But the album is dope, and like, and the reason I bring that up is because I don't follow a lot of the newer generation of music. It just it's too much sometimes. Like it's a lot to consume. All of the littles and the 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 ABC names and shit. Like I can't keep up. So, but you know, with the with the the fact that Fifty Cent got involved in this dude's album, I think is what um pulled me in because I was like, okay, this is he's got the he's got the top fifteen tracks on like Apple or whatever right now. His whole wow. album is the whole. You know the whole thing. So I mean, I'm happy for. I'm, I don't want to say I'm happy for him because he's gone. Right. Uh, yeah. That that was it was for for today's culture for you know because what he is really is if Fifty Cent came out in 2020 and was rapping over trap beats, that's what Pop Smoke basically is. Okay. The, the cadence, the voice, it's you know even kind of look like him. That's kind of mm -hmm. what it all basically. But it was it's a cool record. I mean. Yeah. The, al the album is dope, and I um I appreciated it. Uh, have the the big talk, Jada versus Fabulous, the versus battle. Yeah. Now that Jada. was <laughs> hashtag Jada Trump. Yeah, right, Henny Jada, whatever they saying. Yo, the shit was it was really entertaining. Like as far as um versus battles, I think that was the best one that I've seen to um to this date. What's your top five moments of the night? If Damn, you can recall it's, five. This is my favorite rap versus. Um I was at work watching this shit, so I'm kinda like in and out, in and out. I just I just thought 
Jada being drunk obviously was the best. That shit was funny. I, I know Jada Kiss is a funny nigga. I didn't know a lot. A lot of people didn't really know Jada Kiss personality. Now people coming at him, they want to do reality show. I'm like Jada Kiss has always been a funny yeah. nigga. And he was drunk. Uh, really, what I remember about it, like I say, I just kept telling people Jada got more iconic verses and, and songs. Fab just was trying to go verse for verse. I'm like, you're not gonna go verse for verse with Kiss. Yeah. Yeah, play the girl joints and stick to what you do. He was trying to, it just wasn't going to mesh well. But, I mean, Jada kind of was cheating a little bit. He played the victory joint with yeah. Biggie because <laughs> he wrote Puppy's verse. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. But it was, I don't really think it's a winner in, anyway. They, they should have a, I want to see versus do, have a judge panel. Yeah. And let that, the fans. That was, that was going to be the, the question. So yeah. how can an artist be victorious in a versus battle or quote unquote celebration. Know. If people got, um, if people's feelings might get hurt, but yeah, do it. Like have Swiss beats in them, do a judge panel there. And then have like, if you're going to do it on Instagram, do a poll and make everybody vote who, who won it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Real closure. Yeah. Know, some people still think that one. And I'm like, I no, I don't, I don't think he did, but I mean, it's subjective. But I yeah. enjoyed it. It was dope. Cause, it, it cause Kiss, funny. Kiss definitely had some, some like, some. It was like it was. It brought me back to a moment where I was like, "Damn, hold up, I forgot yeah. about that joint." And he exactly. opened up with uh, what the fuck did he open up with? Was it uh, Money Blackout? Right? Nah, he opened up with Blackout. With with, uh, with X on X. Out. Yeah, it's like that was a tough one to follow. Yeah, you might see me in the Jack truck. Yeah. yeah well, he played band for TV, and I'm like, what are you gonna play after that? Like, yeah. Man, what you gonna play with after we after he played? We gonna make it. This, yeah, yeah. He had like I'm talking about like decades of hits, and Fab has like mad like, verses. Yeah, but he just it's like it's a difference between okay, you got a hit like Breathe is a hit. Yeah, you got icon shit like J some Jada shit just is icon. All about the Benjamins. I mean, come on. The the energy itself was just like it was dope. Yeah, it was it was good because Fab's like he's he's chill, he's mellow. Jada is like, yo, hold up, Fab, Fab, stop your joint, yo. I really love this track. Like, yeah. this is my and they favorite. Went to home together. That was the first <laughs> time the rappers was in the same room since they yeah. Versus. I so want to say the the real winners would be um, Swizz and Timberland because when they get these rappers together, you know, you you realize like they their their production catalog is. <laughs> way longer than they even led on to believe. Oh yeah, and they um, they getting paid too, don't get it twisted, because Apple Apple Music is now broadcasting this shit. So. Yeah, I watched it on Apple too. And YouTube, there's plenty of platforms with it, so yeah, they, they definitely laugh into the bank with that Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the versus battle was dope. Um, What what is a, another versus battle that you would like to see, like an iconic one? Uh, I wanted to see X and D um, and Jay Z, but Jay Z thinks he's better than everybody. He's right. uh, above the people, um, so you won't get, you won't see him. You won't see Pharrell. You won't see Kanye. If the check ain't big enough, you certain right. people think they not, they not gonna do it. They are not gonna do it for the culture. I think Pharrell and Kanye would be a good one because they're they both like super versatile. Them motherfuckers can do it. Though. They they think they're too good for that. Pharrell already turned it down before. Yeah. They, but they would have to be in a concert venue like Staples Center or something. Them them, them bougie niggas ain't gonna do that. They gonna come to the trenches, right? That that and that's what kind of bothers me about the whole thing. And it's like you know people want these people to speak on social issues, but they won't even come and do things yeah. for the people that are at home. Like people have nothing right now. Like I said, I when I was listening to it, it brought me back to a time. In, in life where I was like, you know, almost like carefree. Like I didn't have bills or anything. I didn't worry about shit. And even though like I'm here, I'm making dinner and all of this stuff, but I'm like, I just felt like great. And I was like, this is what people need. Like give, give back, just give back, you know, a little bit of your time. Like you ain't doing nothing else right now. No, that is, everything, like I say, they, they think that these are the same people who, when have you seen Lil Wayne on The Breakfast Club? Nicki Minaj, Drake. They don't go to award shows. They don't go to... They, so if these people think they're that above, above people in the culture not to do that, they're not going to do no verses. Right. Um, that was the thing about back in the day. No one was bigger than the culture. Like, Biggie's last video interview was Rap City with Joe Claire. And he yeah. was the 
was artists in, in hip hop at the time. No one was bigger than the culture. So who would I like to see? I mean, I'm really running out because they've done so many battles. Yeah. They were supposed to do Juicy J wants to battle Dr. Dre. What do you think about that? <laughs> I don't I don't know. See, I don't think that would be a good matchup. No, it's because I, I, it's a different type of energy. Yeah, him versus Manny Fresh would be dope. Juicy Manny, J? Freddie battles Scott Storch because Scott Storch burned him. Manny Fresh and Juicy J, two Southern legends. Yeah. <laughs> Juicy J versus Jazzy Pay, something like that. But Dr. Right. Dre, you're not, nah, bro. You're not going. Yeah, Dre got to Dre got to battle uh, Diddy. Like it's got to be like or, or uh, yeah. Jermaine Dupree or something like right. that. Right, with some big smash singles. Like you, I, I just know inside the Dr. Dre going through that before us too. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I didn't even. You know what's funny? I ain't even touch on that one because I was like, I, I haven't. She, he, we might finally get that detox album though. Yeah, that's what everybody was saying. Like, need that money, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, does he really need that money though? Nah, but you know, it's, it's I think it's like a, a money, it's like billionaires' arrogance or millionaire yeah. arrogance. If I just if I had eight hundred mil to my name and now I only got four hundred mil, I gotta get that shit back. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I'm just but it took you a lifetime to get it, get so it's like principle. I gotta get it back, so right I might be more motivated now. And do you know the 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 the, the Interesting part about that whole um, situation with Dr. Dre and um, the divorce is everybody's headline is there's no prenup. And it's like, why is that the main fo- Like, yo, what is wrong with our people? Yeah. Like, they, they know what time it is. <laughs> right. And so I, you know, I was at, what, what was it? I think it was a baby shower, which is so funny. You had a baby shower and um, I was outside and there was a bunch of dudes and they were talking about, um, you know, divorces and, you know, prenups and women. And I'm like, yo, you don't think if a woman's been with you a certain amount of years, if y'all decide to split, she shouldn't get anything? And they're like, nah, I work for it all, blah, blah, blah. I was like, nigga, she sucked your dick. Like, <laughs> that should be enough to be like, yo, we're done here. All right, cool. I'm talking about like years and I ain't talking about, all right, we were married for a year or two. I'm talking about five or more. You got five or more years in, this person, their life was your life because it's just morally right. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people haven't been through the um, experience of having a life with somebody and then y'all separate. And, you know, I'm talking about years, like, cause me and my son's mother, we were damn near almost 10 years in. And when we separated, it might as well have like been a divorce. Cause I was like, oh shit. Like our life was pretty much together, hand in hand. Everything we had was ours. And so when we split, I was like, shit, I don't got shit, you know? Cause I was like, what the hell, you know? And and it's not, you know, man, woman, it doesn't matter because I feel like when you create a life with somebody, if y'all decide to split or something should happen, the other person should be taken care of. Like it's it's just not right. Like, she was, they was together 20, 24 years, I think. They got, yeah. they got kids together. Now they, technically, did she produce any beats? No, I don't think she deserves 60%, 50 maybe. Yeah. Okay, you helped raise the kids. Dre was a mess at one point. He was in and out, but Dr. Dre, he's always kind of been a stay at home type of. Uh, Dre don't leave his house or stay in the studio type dude. Yeah, I don't Dre know. Yeah, but um, you know, I don't know what all she went through with him, but yeah, she deserves some some bread. I just that's the thing too. We don't know. But say, I, that's more than half. I'm like, what what beats did you produce? That's California, though, man. New California. Yeah, like. I get it, but how, do you really need sixty percent of somebody's net worth? That's net worth is a billion dollars. You need that much to survive? No, I don't think so. <laughs> but <laughs> like I said, it's it, that is crazy. Sixty percent. The kids are grown, nigga. It's no, <laughs> you don't need that. That's a huge chunk. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't mean, you know, yeah, she deserves something. You know, yeah. she held it down. I just don't think she deserves more than half. I think so. that's wild. But I don't yeah. blame her. Doing it, you go for the top. You go for as much as you can get. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, then see what you can get. Yeah. All right. Um. So before we close out, let's uh touch on some sports. So the 2020 NFL season is on the horizon. Um. They're talking about bringing it back. Um. There's a few things. So do you think that Cap will get signed by team this year with everything that's going on? The way that they're pandering and the way that they just made uh, Lift Heavy Voice, the new Black National Anthem that's going to be sang every day, probably. 
maybe get him a job as a coach or something. He hasn't played football in four years. Right. Um, so I can see them doing it. I just, it's just not going to be authentic. It's not going to be genuine. Okay, now y'all want to get a man a job. So if they do it, I think they'll get more backlash if they was to give him a job now than if they just gave him a job two years ago. Right. But now, I feel like now they have to. Yeah, and, then, and, and at the same time, you're gonna you're gonna have the people that's pleased, and then you're gonna have people like me who's like, yeah, y'all just doing that because. Excuse me, y'all just doing that because now that's the cool thing to do. It's cool right now for corporate America to, and you know to embrace black culture and all our blackness. But yeah, y'all trying to get that boy a job. Yeah, so you know what it job. is. Like, yeah, and um, so I looked at it that way too. As all right, yeah, they're going to catch backlash for it, and they're going to catch backlash if they don't do it. So it's yeah. like they they're going to have to, and like the 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 national black anthem being sung now it's like yo i feel like that's like just over the top pandering now all of a sudden y'all want to put the other one before it was like this is the national anthem you have to respect it you have to don't take a knee you son of a bitches blah 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 this that and the third and all of a sudden it's like man yo stop pandering just give us our reparations and, and go yeah, ahead with you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah like, like I, I just disgusting i, I want to see football i love it but I spend 10 hours on Sundays watching this shit. Don't even ask me why, but I kind of even don't want to see this. I'm just going to just skip to the, the ball. Let's just get straight to the to the gridiron. I don't even want to see the shenanigans. I right. said this years ago, why they didn't start broadcasting the national anthem until like three or four years ago because the military was paying the NFL. Cut that contract out. Let's just, it used to be at one point in time, you just cut the TV on at one o'clock and it was straight football. Coin toss, yeah. let's now they've made it so political and now you got people who, you know, up in arms and upset. You don't have to play an anthem. Right. For anything, the Super Bowl. We don't need no the NBA only does it when it's a championship game. But not right. only that, why it's does you, why are you bring in politics into sports? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now they've done like you remember Whitney Houston did the national anthem back in the day. Like that that was the Super Bowl. Okay, I, I get that. Right. You know. You don't have to do that every single fucking week. Come on, they, the military was trying to recruit people because we live in an era now where they can't draft you anymore. Yeah, so they were paying the NFL to play that anthem. So as a form of recruitment, we're trying to recruit people to join the military. Maybe if we play this anthem every single game every Sunday, we can get some suckers to you know want to sign up. That's the whole plan. They thought. Yeah, I don't know if it works or not. You know, people join the military every year, but that's all it was. It was just a recruitment uh, thing. They were just trying to get recruits because they can't draft you anymore. They can't say, "Hey, come, nigga, come here, come on, nigga, let's go to Vietnam or right. let's go to Afghanistan." They can't do that, so that's what they were using the NFL for. Hmm. That but. makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense. So, um, Cam Newton also got signed to the Patriots for one year. Yeah. What's up with that? They like the. Richard Sherman. The, is it oh, over for the Patriots as we know it? I wouldn't say over as far as uh, over, over, like dead, stick a fork in them. But I don't, no, I not think, like that, but they're not going to be the Patriots that we once knew. No, nah, no, nah, I think the schedule's brutal. They don't have any weapons. I go into all the football analytics about why they're not going to be the, the, who you thought they were, the, who they were the last few years. I mean, but uh, specifically because they don't have uh, Gronk or... Brady Brady anymore. Have, they don't have weapons and the schedule's brutal. I think this uh I think they bring, they brought in Cam just to, to sell tickets, really, because there was nobody you were gonna watch the Patriots for. What were you gonna watch them for without Brady and then now you have to watch because it's like, okay, I wanna see what Cam's gonna do. You know, it's, it sells tickets, it's good for television. I wanna watch you think that that's gonna sell tickets? Yeah, because Cam's when Cam when Cam Newton's healthy, he's fun to watch. He's one of the funnest, he's entertaining. Yeah, team. but right. in Massachusetts, right. black quarterback. The thing now, wait, if they when they lose, yeah, they gonna get his ass. And when they, it's not gonna be like he played in racist ass North Carolina. Jerry Richardson. Ah, that's right. The owner was actually racist. They made him sell the team. So he's, but it's a different level of scrutiny in Massachusetts, as you would know, than oh, yeah. down even down south. You know, so yeah, yeah, you're playing for a, t- a franchise that's used to winning championships. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Game, when they lose a game in New England, nigga, it's like the world just came to an end. It's, oh they, yeah, they don't lose often, so they're not used to that. It's, it's I, I pray for sure. Cam. 
<laughs> I lived I lived in Boston the year the uh the Red Sox won um oh, their, um 2004 World <laughs> Cup called world what was world, what the hell is it world series world man. series yeah it's out I, I ain't a sports guy <laughs> well i lived it yo that shit was insane like you want to see right. like white people go crazy i mean they fucking like that was the first time i heard about rubber bullets like they you know how many people were killed with rubber bullets because the fucking the uh the red sox won like it was like some some odd number of years, like over that probably over drought. They had yeah. one first championship in a hundred years. And that and yo, that city fucking turned all yeah. the way upside down. Same but, thing when the Patriots won a, a Super Bowl, I think right like at the beginning of their dynasty or whatever. Like yeah, that, was that shit that was, was insane too. Like so <laughs> oh yeah. I I witnessed some of that shit and I was like, yo, this is this city is not one to be played with when was it comes it on to the news. Was it on the news is rioting and all of that stuff like they do when black people uh, act up? Yeah, I think they they did, but it wasn't it wasn't as like to to that degree of they you know they weren't like trying to they weren't shaming people. They were they just saying guard out there. No, 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 no. Yeah, they black yeah. people, let, let Atlanta do a boycott. Like let let uh, the Falcons win the championship, and you got two million black people tearing up the streets like in Boston. Right. They call it National Guard, martial law. <laughs> it ain't gonna be no rubber bullets. Yeah, nah, they were they, they were downtown, like they like Com Ave was like flooded with people. Like yeah. I'd never seen anything like it. Boston's and strong. yeah, and that that was crazy. So uh final question. Will football we be worth watching without fans this year? Is it gonna, they're gonna do it, but I I heard they're gonna make you sign a waiver and you're gonna bring fans, but this is not gonna be let's say a stadium fits like the Cowboy Stadium fits a hundred thousand. Let's say they put in sixty thousand, but you sign a waiver before you purchase your ticket, like hey, um, you know, corona I could you, die. Okay, we're getting the virus possibly. Maybe separate the seats, you know, a couple of feet for distancing. Everybody skip a seat. <laughs> Cowboys just, ain't worth dying for. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, you're right. But I just can't watch sports without a crowd. And um, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't watched any sporting event um, since COVID because everything is crowdless. And this is like, I, I think this has really made you realize how important people are. Mm-hmm. and just award shows did you see the bt awards with the no nah i didn't i i i've heard mixed reviews about it yeah but i'm like you can't do certain shit without that i hope it's not without 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 uh fans but if this without fans i don't think i can watch it yeah i was thinking the same thing too i was like i don't think it's going to be the same the energy is going to be off and yeah. And they're saying mic up the players. I'm like, okay, so somebody's gonna slip up and say nigga. Oh yeah. Person. Yeah. No, that just, might make it interesting, but I like them and make it fucking play with a hundred people, something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something like it's gotta be some kind of put, put some fake crowd noise in something. Right. But see, that's the, the only problem is gonna be um how are how are these companies these these teams gonna make um make any any money, you know, because yeah. If that's same thing with basketball, like if they're saying, "All right, we're going to play with our fans," so how the hell are you? Like you're going to, yeah, you'll get the commercials, or I don't even know if they get the money from the commercials. Does it go to the broadcasting yeah, station? Yeah. So like people buying tickets, like how is this going to work? Like how is it profitable? That's what that's, I want. Let's say they're going to do that waiver thing, probably. Where you're going to have to sign that waiver. And like I said, I've seen a video of a bunch of like 200 white people in Michigan at the beach. Uh, nobody was social distancing. Nobody had a mask. Trust me, you got people out here who give no fucks, who are dying to go out to party, go to a game, go to the movies. You know, there's some people out here who don't give a fuck, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, I had some friends of mine. They wanted to, they wanted me to go to the club last night. I'm like, I'm not going to the club. Right the now. club? Wow. Yeah. I don't care if you do gotta wear a mask. I'm definitely not going to the club with a mask. But imagine yeah. trying to do a shot with a damn uh, mask on you, and y'all got to do <laughs> one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, bro. I go first, you go like what? Yeah. But like I say, cabin fever is real, and I think people just don't give a fuck. So it's, it might sound crazy to you and me, but it, trust me, it's, it's people who are ready to unleash, who are like, fuck it. I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm ready to go to the movies. Yeah, well, I never fuck with the movies anyway. The COVID just yeah, made it easier for me. 
But yeah, no, people don't care. Like my cousin, um, you know, she sent out a group text uh, to the family and she was telling us everybody that there's a, a cookout at her uh, boyfriend's grandmother house or something. And I was like, so just fuck social distancing, huh? And she was like, yup. I was like, wow, okay. I was like, I won't be there, but okay. Uh, cabin fever is getting this yeah. people, man. So like I said, it might sound wild, but I'm telling you, if they, if they do a waiver and say, hey, you can come in here, but you're at risk, and, you know, fuck Damn. it. Do it. That's a shame. Well, that's our show for this week. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, as always, make sure you guys like, subscribe, subscribe, share. Hit the thumbs that, up. Yep. And uh yeah, the notifications. Definitely turn those on, man. Cause uh the way that shit be going, content just be flying out. Um s- salute to all the new subscribers. Thank you guys for uh tuning in. It's gonna get uh more interesting as the summer goes because I feel like 2020 ain't done with us yet. Man, I hope so. Yeah, y'all be easy, man. <laughs> Word. and Easy on my soul, please. <laughs> and until next week, you guys enjoy yourself. Be safe out there. Frankie, salute to you. Thank you. I'll Always. talk to you. All right, bro. All right, peace.